Hey everyone and welcome to this video. Today will be something really really amazing because I'm going to build live a $5,200 chatbot we previously built for one of our clients. What this chatbot does is pretty simple. It is made to create dynamically certificates for a specific product of our clients. And in this video I will specifically focus on this functionality. So what we will do is we will create a chatbot, we will use a classifier to classify specific intents, we will automate the process from creating a certificate to actually bringing it to the user via email. And all of that will be done live, so I'm literally doing it right here with you guys, so you can follow me step by step. And I know it will be a lot of information, and I know I will be rushing through to keep it in a time that is sane and you can actually like go in between and I don't spend too much time here talking about too many things and confusing you. My goal is to make it as short and precise as I can with only the information that you actually need. And it gets even better because you get all of the templates and prompts we use within our resource hub and you'll find the link for that down in the description. So simply head over there download the stuff you need, it's completely for free, so we don't charge you anything for that. Before we get into it, I also want to mention that the whole setup is free, so you can literally start with it without any cost, uh, which is the best. So we're going to leverage voice flow for our chatbot, we're going to use make.com for our workflow automations, we're going to use Google Drive as our storage for the certificates, and we are going to use Google Docs as our templating engine for the certificates. All right, let's not waste more time, let's go right into it. The first thing we need to do is we obviously need to head over to VoiceFlow and create a new chatbot. So I already opened the new assistant tab and I'll type in certificate uh, assistant. We select an AI assistant, we select the web chat and language English, obviously because everything is in English nowadays, at least it feels like that. Once we created the chatbot, we can just get rid of all of this default stuff because no one needs that. And we are going to start with a simple um, with a simple capture. So all we do is we first add a text that says something like, welcome, how can I help you? And then we are going to add a capture to capture the user intent, which automatically selects last utterance, which is what we need. So we connect the start to that, which is already step number one. Now we head into the settings of that, set intent scoping to only intents in this step, because that could cause problems later on. Alright, the next step is already the classifier. So, by default, VoiceFlow has its own kind of conditions, which is also what we use, but this classifier is not always as precise as I would like to have it. So what we basically did is we created our own classifier using AI. So we are using a set AI endpoint here, we're gonna set it, uh, we're gonna call it classifier for example. AI model and now we're opening the prompt settings. Head over to hub.integraticus.com. You can find both of our prompts within here. So I'll just copy this one, add it to the system prompt. And what this one basically does is just define some, some basic things about what this AI system does, what it should do, the constraints and the classifiers, which is the interesting part because in our case we have only one here, issue certificate. But let's for example say your chatbot should also do other things like refunds. You can also add them as components into your chatbot and then mention them here as classifier. So you can say, for example, refunds, and then say create refund as the classifier name. And this will basically allow classifying the specific um, refund request. But we only have issue certificate for now because that's all we need. So now we need to enter the actual user classifier prompt, which is this small piece down here. So we can add this one here. And what it does is it basically just uses the, the last utterance variable. So basically whatever the user typed in here. And the rest we can keep the same, so you can leave max tokens at 128, temperature is also okay. Now we can pre preview it. So I want to say, I want a certificate, for example. By clicking on it, you can see it shows issue certificate, which is exactly what we want. Now this reply we want to save to a specific variable, and let's call this one last utterance um, classifier, for example. So we create a new variable, it's added to it, and that's it for the classifier. So now we are going to go into the conditions, we add some logic, and we call it um, we create certificate, which basically is the path we want to take whenever we want to create a certificate. What we do now is, I go back in the classifier, I just copy this issue certificate, add over, add a condition, variable, I select the last utterance classifier, and if it's set to issue certificate, boom, we go into here. You can also add a no match uh, in case something was wrong. Uh, just no match. And link this one back to just some simple text field, for example, that says, um, sorry, I didn't get that. Please try again. 
So, and then from here, we just link back to the last utterance and we, oh, we try this thing over again. So it's a, it's a very simple process uh, from until here. So now we actually start with the certificate creation, which is um, an interesting part. So the way we did it is we first collected an email address because our client had all of his customer data within a database, including names and uh, titles, positions, etc. So all of that stuff we wanted to fetch and actually use in the certificate. So what we usually have done is we would have used an, an API request to a specific database, but in our case, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I don't want to set up a database connection. So what I do is I will just set up a new JavaScript block. And before I actually head into it, I go to the NLU model, variables, and I create two new variables. One of them is user username, and the other one will be user email. So both of them done. Uh, I mean, email actually, I didn't need it. Uh, I just created it, we will anyways use it. Oh yeah, exactly, I, I wanted to collect the email, my, my bad. I just missed that. So to collect the email, I will just add another text field. I call it, please enter your email, boom. And then we're gonna add another capture right under here that actually captures the email. So we say user email. Now we link this one up to here. And this one actually has to go to the block like this. Perfect, so now we are ready. So we basically capture the email, we add it to the user email variable. And now we head in the JavaScript and let's assume this JavaScript would be our database. So we just fetch the data, blah, 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 through the API. And we want to fill in the username variable. So I'll just set it statically now to Yanis more. And that's literally it. So whenever, my name comes back basically or whatever you find for that specific user email we want to create the certificate so the next step would be the interesting part so we're going to use an api connection which is what we actually link up to our make.com scenario so now we basically have to create a make.com scenario but before we do that we are first setting up our templating engine in combination with google drive to make everything work and to do that you first head into your google drive you create a folder. I did that here with YouTube test. So then you need to add a certificate template. So you can basically create a Google doc that looks the way you want it. So what you would have, like to have in a certificate. If you don't want to create it from scratch, you can head over to a site like um, the Google docs and they have free certificate templates available like here. All of them are free. You can simply just click on them, download them and copy them, import them into your Google drive and you're ready to go. So I did that here already using this um, black graduation, graduation certificate. When I open that up, you will see it's literally like a very basic certificate template. It has a name, it has a signature. I changed that before. So it's like what you would expect from a certificate, maybe missing some, some dates and some specific descriptions. But what's most important is that we can customize it, which we can, as you can see, we can text everywhere. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add some dynamic text, which we then later on can use within Mac.com to actually create um, a specific certificate. So how we do that is we wrap a specific text in a double curly brackets. So we want to have the username here. So I'd say something like uh, username, for example, or let's separate it a bit better so we can read it. User underscore name and the curly brackets. The signature is usually from the issuer, so I'll just leave it for now and for the sake of this video. So. This is all I will customize now, which basically means the certificate will be generated just with a username. And the goal is to send it after, of course, to the, to the user via email. All right, since we have done that and you have that certificate template within here, changed and added with a specific dynamic text, we can head over to make.com and create a new scenario. So I will walk through it very fast. If you don't understand something, I suggest just pause the video look how I did it, try to replicate it. And if you still don't understand how it works after, you can drop me a message in the comments. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to add the webhook integration with a custom webhook trigger. So we create one here, which I just do quickly. Boom, we copy the address. I'll head back into our voice flow chatbot. And in a get, I paste this specific webhook URL. Now under parameters, we want to add some parameters. What we want to do is we want to get over the email. So the email will be the user email. And we also want to send over the name, which will be the user name variable. Which for some reason we don't find now. Ah, I missed, I missed the, the bracket, my bad. Okay, 
username is in here as well so that basically works and we can already test that by just clicking on run once so now we can try we just go uh, send the request we just add some demo data let's say uh, user email john doe at test.com then as a username we just add john doe or let's say yanis more so it's a little bit more obvious that it's actually automated we click create it sends the data it comes back with 200 which means it worked so we also see the request here including the text we just added so the next step is we actually need to add a google docs connection to create a document from a template so they have an action available here we select it you set up your connection up here you can um, leave this one as it is you choose the drive it's also correct so as a document id all we do is we basically just go into youtube test we head into the YouTube test and select the certificate template file. And as you can see now, something is loading, which means make.com is selecting the dynamic text, which is username, which unsurprisingly is that specific variable, which we wanted. So we can click into it, select the name, add a title. We say um, certificate of, what did I call it? Prompt engineer. The certificate of prompt engineering for, let's say also the, the name of the person. Okay, new documents location. For now, I'm just going to select the same YouTube test folder. If you want to make it properly, what I suggest to do is you first create the folder, check if it exists, and if not, then create it, and then add that specific um, template into the new folder of that specific user. So that's it for this one. We can now already test that. So as you can see here, there's basically nothing. And if I resend that specific request, you can see it comes on here. It runs through and it will basically create the template in here, which should appear in a second. Certificate of Promising for Yannis Mohr. So when I click onto it, onto it, you will see it has my name in, in here and everything is set up properly. So this works. Perfect. First thing done. Next is we want to create a download. So all we do is we click on another module. We go to download a document. Now we don't want to select the document ID, but we want to map it. So we click here, select the document ID from the last step. And as a docx, we changed that to PDF because we want to have a PDF since we send it via email. And lastly, we need to add another step in selecting the Gmail integration along with create a draft because we want to see it. So we don't want to directly send it. You can also send it directly if you want to. There's an action for that available too. Now, I'm going to select a folder. So I already have my drafts folder open. There's no email in here. Perfect. So let's just select the draft folder. And the recipient, we want to send it to the actual user, like we would usually do it. As a subject, we say, your certificate is ready. As a content, you can add HTML. I just keep it super simple for now, to not spend any time on it. So we say, hey, at blah, blah, blah. Your certificate is in the, is uh, attached. Then we click on add attachment and it already selects the one from the previous step, which is great. And now we are ready to go. So I will just run that again, just so you see it works. When I resend that, you will see that basically make.com or Google will create the specific template again in the drive. Here it is. Now it will download it and it will actually create an email, which when I refresh, it is here. So you can actually see that the certificate is a download. That's exactly what we want. So everything works perfectly so far. So, which means we can just save that we can just schedule it so we turn it on this one is also done so all we need to do now is just inform the user that this certificate was created so we can say thank you your certificate is on the way to you to your given email and that's it so you can of course adjust it and uh, make it nicer whatever so i'm just going to literally add an end template and <laughs> select connect the bot to it and that's it so now we have the full workflow ready to get everything going and i'm just going to demonstrate it one more time so we have nothing in here the template scenario is on so all i'm going to do now is i will click on run we run a test and i say i want a certificate boom Let's see what happens. It matches something. It asks for entering the email. Let me just turn on debugging. So now we enter our email. Let's say something we haven't used. Um, Yannis more at demo test. Boom. Now it asks for, it, it triggers the scenario. It says, thank you, certificate is on the way. 
this stuff here is basically running. I don't need to do anything. I can go here and click. And as you can see, your certificate is ready. It's here. Janis Mohr is added here from our database. And it's the email is mentioned to Janis Mohr at demo.test, which is exactly what we wanted. So there you go. This is a very, very basic structure of what we did in our chatbot to uh, provide some really good value to our client. And I already started adding the information here on our hub. So later on, you can literally just go over to our hub and download everything, including the templates for make.com as well as for the voice flow that you just saw here. So feel free to try it out. And for now, I hope you really enjoyed the video. And if there's anything specific you would like to see as a tutorial, drop it down in the comments and I'm very happy to help you out. Until next time, take care.